Welcome back, rankers. Two main things today. You may have heard in Australia oh, about two weeks ago now, there was a massive hack on a major hosting company who will also happen to be a registrar called Distribute IT. And basically what happened, 4,800 websites went off the air. Some of them became completely unrecoverable, uh, be, but others were, uh, were off the air only temporarily. Um, and that had to do with who was backing up and who wasn't backing up that was using Distribute IT services. So a lot of people basically lost their content. Now, what happens in that situation with Google is that Google does not want to send its users to a site that is down or non-existent or doesn't work. So what is it going to do? It's going to demote your ranking. So even if you get that site back up, your rankings may still be demoted or maybe there's things that Google still thinks that are problematic with your site. So I wrote a blog post on the weekend which will tell you all about it if you know someone or you were hit yourself by the outage. Basically, the main things are this. Make sure that uh, you always have uh, another backup of your site uh, in addition to what your hosting company is doing. And we used to call this triple redundancy. But in the world, world of cloud and everything else, everything's sort of become a bit too easy for a lot of companies out there thinking that someone else is backing up their site. Make sure you back it up yourself. Also, um, if, you have, um, if you're having a lot of outages with your hosting company, change your hosting company. We had a client who we found that once we put our, uh, our services on their site to watch and monitor their site's uptime, we found that every Saturday their site went down for nine hours and they had no idea. And this was bad because, obviously, for those, that, those nine hours on that Saturday, no one could ever get to them. And, uh, of course, Google, when they did come along, saw they weren't there and, therefore, it hurt their rankings because Google didn't want to send its users to a site that was only up half of the time. When we changed their hosting company, that fixed, and they jumped up onto the front page for their keywords. So make sure you have a reliable hosting company. If you're not using a monitoring uptime tool, ask your hosting company to provide one, or there are plenty of good free ones out there as well. Just go and Google uptime monitoring tool, because it's really important that your site is always up when, especially when the Googlebot comes to have a look from a ranking perspective. The other thing that you can do, if you have uh, still got your domain name running, but for whatever reason there's been some sort of catastrophe and your site has disappeared off the air and you've got a, a bunch of uh, gnomes rebuilding it for you, um, set up what we call a 503 error, or sorry, a 503 server response. And that 503 server response tells the rest of the world that this is only a temporary outage and you will be back soon. Your rankings still may drop because Google doesn't want to send people to a site that's down. But with a 503 response, you can also say check back in so many hours, minutes, days, whatever it might be. And that gives Google an idea that, you know, this is a temporary outage and the site is coming back up. We've seen it happen with, with really big sites a lot of the time too, where they're doing some sort of merge or they're, they're, they're creating a new site, they're moving to a new site, and someone in the infinite wisdom decides that it's a good thing to turn off the existing site before the new one launches. Don't do it. It's, it's shabby. <laughs> um, but that's what the 503 server response code is for. So you need to ask your hosting company to set that up for you. And then, of course, when you do you get the site back up, you, you stop doing the 503 response. But above all, make sure that if you are hit with something like this, monitor things in Google Webmaster Tools because Webmaster Tools is going to tell you a bunch of things that you will not find out otherwise. And things like you know, what errors it's currently seeing. So, for instance, if you go into Diagnostics under Webmaster Tools and you look for crawl errors, just Google's a bit slow today. It will tell you a bunch of things that it's seeing and the sorts of responses. I mean, the typical one that you will always see in Google Webmaster Tools under 
uh, crawl errors is 404 if you have them. That's and you need to fix those up because some of those 404s may be coming from external linking from other sites that you don't know that are linking to the wrong page on your site. And the quickest and, and best thing that you can do for your own site is to 301 those 404s to other URLs because half the time it's too hard to go and tell uh, whoever's linking to you to fix that link. So you just 301 them yourself and you get the link love from that link. And finally today, Google has announced a new service, which is very, very interesting. It's called, well, they're calling it Authorship, and they announced this the other week. But basically, what you're going to see start appearing now for articles is photos of people who wrote the article in search. And this is important because what it tells us is that Google is now going to start putting some sort of value against authorship and this is a new authorship code that they've they've just released basically you need to go and set up a google profile if you haven't got one but it all gets back to this thing that that google's trying to do it's trying to improve content on the web it's trying to uh, reward good content on the web and so your authorship value now is going to be measured by google uh, which is very interesting Basically, it works like this. You have a website. You have a piece of content on that website. That piece of content will then link to what we call an author page, so a, a page purely about the author. So, for instance, I, I contribute on a couple of different sites, and one of the sites is uh, Peter Switzer's site, uh, Grow Your Business, for those in Australia who, who know Peter Switzer. And I don't have an author page on that site. I'm just there with all the other authors. So what I'll be saying to Peter is, Peter, you might want to just set up separate author pages for all those sites, for all those different authors, because there's about 20 uh, experts on that site. And the reason that you would do that is so that Google can see that this, con this piece of content here was written by this author, and then this author page then links to my Google profile page, and then I link my Google profile page back to my author page. Now this can be done on your own site as well, and it should be done on your own site as well. And basically, uh, if I just get a little bit nerdy for a second, the content page, when you're linking the author's name to the author page, it's using the attribute rel equals author, and then on the author page, when you're linking to the profile page, it uses the attribute rel equals me, and the same back from, I mean, the, the, the prof profile page, it will do it automatically if you set up, and I'll just show you quickly a Google profile page, but if you edit your profile, when you edit your links, and these are all the links of, of my own um, you know, Twitter, dig, all the things that, that I subscribe to around the web and where I can be found, and if I go to edit custom link, it will give me this option here. This page is specifically about me. And if I check that, Google will add the attribute rel equals me. And the reason that Google's doing that is, and, and doing this reciprocal linking between author pages and the profile pages is so that people can't just necessarily just attribute content to you and you can't just go and claim it. So if, you, if I was just to link to hear and say this page is specifically about me, well, I could just be claiming that piece of content. So that page, therefore, has to link back to the profile page. So there's this reciprocal linking, and this is where reciprocal linking is a good thing, to prove that I wrote that piece of content. And that's going to be really important because Google is going to start rewarding authorship. And uh, that is it for today's show. Let me know how you go with Google authorship and the code and your linking. And if you see, start to see the results turn up in the search engine results, because I'd like to have a, have a look at them. I haven't seen any yet. And we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.